Silicon carbide has been around for years and years, over a century in fact, but it's only today that scientists are discovering new uses which could make it a huge player in the future of renewable energy. Working with the Kidsgrove-based Conva team, it's being dubbed by some as an environmental wonder material that will bring significant energy savings in power systems, among other things, cars and planes. At present, Conva team are looking to apply it into research and development of wind turbines. From about 10 years ago, there have been a lot of work in terms of silicon carbide and how the power device is and how they could actually manufacture the material sufficiently for us to be able to get something we could use. And really, it's, since then, it's been waiting for that technology to develop into something that actually becomes a commercial product. The thing that is new is the fact that you can make it into very large crystals now, single crystals, that are suitable for making semiconductor uh, components out of sort of thing you have in a silicon chip, but this time made of silicon carbide. And, uh, and, and the ability to make those large crystals is a thing that is new. The advantages that it has are that you can have much higher electric fields across the material. So for example, such as uh, the wind turbine, where you need very high voltages, it can support much higher voltages. It can also, uh, um, it's a much better thermal conductor than silicon, so you can remove heat from it more effectively. And also, in addition to that, you can operate it at higher temperatures, so you don't need to cool it as much. So this, all these things come together to make it far more effective for these uh, high power switching applications. A research student, Peter Gammon, at the University of Warwick, has been working as part of Professor Morby's team at the School of Engineering as part of his PhD. As a result of this research into silicon carbine and its uses, potentially wind turbines could one day be connected to the national grid. Long term, it will be cheaper, simpler, lighter, more durable and less prone to breakdown. The material itself is very expensive because when you make these crystals, they are not just one crystal type. It's, 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 it's a bit of an art to make one single crystal. There are like 200 different types you can make if you're not careful. So making just one crystal type is the art of making them. And that's the difficult thing that all the intellectual property is tied up in. So there are only a few companies in the world that have access to that intellectual property and are able to, to, to grow these crystals. And really what you need is competition from several suppliers to bring the cost down. Where for us we're making volume equipment and things then it's got to be able to come in and provide the capability at a competitive price. Um, we, we're not looking for a niche material that can only do small items when you're talking about renewables and you know, large quantities of equipment you know, it's got to be able to be economic in its use. The only devices commercially available at the moment are very simple diodes for very low currents and unreasonably low voltages uh, but we really want to push them up to much higher voltages and much much higher currents. So at the moment you can buy yourself a, a diode which is maybe 20 amps but we want to make devices which are hundreds uh, of amps or, or, or even bigger so there's a long long way to go